So, for those that have uh, seen other videos that I do, you'll know that I like a decent cup of coffee in the morning. And uh, up to this point, I bring ground coffee and make a decent cup of coffee. However, at home, I grind coffee beans so it's even fresher. So it got me thinking, can I get a manual grinder to come camping that's not too big, that's light, and not too expensive? So when I started doing some research on these manual grinders, a lot of them look the same. In fact, I would say a lot of them are out of the same factory. So I actually bought the very cheapest one I could find. It's an unbranded one, and I'll put the link on there, the information. It's unbranded, but it's a manual coffee grinder, and it cost me £6.99. £6.99. Now, some of the prices for the similar grinders, in fact, identical looking grinders, went up to round about the 28 pounds, 27, 28 pounds. One or two of the branded, cheaper branded ones for about 15, 16 pound, truly look the same in every aspect. So I bought the six pound 99 manual coffee grinder. Now I have used it already I just hadn't filmed it. So let's have a little look and see what I've bought. As I say, it's, uh, it's unbranded. Uh, it comes from China. It's made out of stainless steel with a plastic insert for the coffee to go in. And it has a little handle that just pops on the top and you, you turn it. So let's have a look. So it came with instructions, but I don't need them because I don't need them because I've uh, tried it already. And then you get a little handle. So basically that's uh, 18 and a half centimetres long and the diameter is four and a half centimetres. It comes in two parts. There's the hopper at the bottom, which has this plastic, clear plastic insert so you can see the level of coffee as you're grinding it. Then it has the top part, which is the grinder itself. And the grinder is ceramic, which apparently that gives you the better uh, grinding. So it's got a ceramic grinder and it's got an adjuster knob on the bottom here. So that adjuster knob just is free turning. So you just turn it to obviously a bit of trial and error where you feel it's best for the type of coffee that you want. Now, this is free turning, whereas some of the more expensive ones, um, when I was doing my research, uh, they clicked into positions. So they had like six positions. So it went click, 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 which is quite handy. This one doesn't do that. But once you've trialed an error, you'd know where, where you want that to be. And it, obviously it, it's designed so that you can have your coffee ground coarse through medium to uh, fine depending on the type of coffee that you're going to uh, have. So you take the lid off and that's the hopper to put the coffee bean in. And then you have a manual handle and this knob here just spins around, which you put on the top and turn around. So that's basically the four parts to it. Your hopper for the ground coffee, your hopper for the coffee beans, 
lid and a manual handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, make myself coffee because I want a coffee and I'm going to use uh, Farrah's Westland Blend. Now Farrah's is a company in Kendall in Cumbria. I'll put a little clip up for you to have a look at when I bought it because it's an outstandingly oldy worldy place and the coffee beans come out of a big big uh, hopper uh, and you buy as little or as much as you want to buy. Good coffee this. Oh, that is so, so good. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, put the whole thing back together again. So that just, that just pushes on. Um, when I was doing my research, uh, some reviews criticised that being loose. But this one, and they didn't, not on this particular unbranded one, on more expensive ones. That is nice firm fit. So there we are. We've got our coffee beans. Now, I'm only going to half fill that hopper simply because that's sufficient to do two espressos in my little pot. So half, so half filled does two coffees, espresso coffees for me with this pot. So now we've got the coffee beans in, just pop the lid back on. There's a little hexagonal fixing on the top and that just fits straight into it. And then all we do, it's actually easier doing it on your knee um, or if you're kneeling down, you could do it on a table. But for me in this position, the best way is to hold this in the middle and then just start to grind it. And if you keep it firm on your knee, it stops it from flying around all over the place. And we just keep grinding until that coffee's done. It'll take you, it'll take you a couple of minutes to, to do. So you'll know when, this, uh, when, the, when it's ground, or just about ground, because this will start to go looser, because there's nothing for it to grind. Now I think the best thing we could do here is, while I'm grinding this, you don't want to, you don't want to sit there watching me grind coffee, I'll put the clip up um, of my visit to the Farrah's coffee shop just so you can get a feel for where I've got the coffee from and the quality of what I've bought. So you have a look at that while I'll grind away. But I've stopped off uh, to call in at a quite a famous uh, coffee shop which is just in front of you now called Farrah's and if I believe it was established in around about 1870 and it's very very oldy world inside but also they roast their own coffees and uh, it's that that I've come for to get a bag of coffee beans You don't mind if I, I'm not going to film you, just the, uh, just the coffee. Did you want it ground, sorry? 
No, no thanks, just coffee beans. Nice evening, thank you. You're camping at the moment? Uh, I'm going up uh, Great Langdale to National, you know, the uh, uh, Stickle Barn, is it? Or not yeah, stick yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stickle Barn's nice. You know, the National Trust site? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going up there. Uh, yeah, I did work experience oh, when I was yeah. about 15 there. Yeah, <laughs> that's wonderful. Do a pair here? Yeah. So you can maybe just see in the window there that it's starting to fill up. It'll only, it won't fill up completely because I've only put half the coffee beans in that I want. But also you can feel it's starting to come a bit loose now and it uh, won't be long before that's now done. Good exercise. The only exercise I get. And there, we've just about gone loose now. In fact, it's now free spinning. So that's when you know that you've actually uh, finished the job. So, take the handle off, take the lid off, take the upper hopper off, and you can see that it's now empty and oh, that is so good and hopefully you can see the coffee ground inside this hopper, the bottom hopper. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, fire up the uh, stove. Get some water in the pot. And we're going to put uh, our coffee into there. Oh, the smell. I wish you could see the smell. <laughs> I wish you could smell this coffee. So that's it. Hopper empty. So that's made sufficient to to do two espressos and although I've tamped it a little bit I haven't tamped it too hard because you want the water to go through it that then sits inside there you get the pot screwed on Just make sure that's nice and firm and let's get it so I think while that's brewing um, we'll just sort of recap on that so six ninety nine. I'll put details on where I got it from and it's got three parts basically bottom hopper top hopper bean hopper I should say and handle
Wonderful. Just wait for the coffee now. It didn't quite go to plan because my gas ran out. And because I'm only away for a couple of nights, I didn't have a spare one. I've done this before. However, a friendly neighbour has boiled it up. So the espresso is now well and truly done. And I'm going to have a brew because I'm so ready for one. So, oh. works a treat. Don't know how long the grinder will last, but yeah, I bet you it lasts for a long time. Cracking goodbye. Dirt cheap. Go for an expensive one if you want. But that cheapo works splendidly. I've used it a few times, actually. So, I know that it works okay. And I love it. Time for a brew. So, good health to you all. Uh.